Okay, time to build some harnesses. Hi, people of the interrupts. I'm sitting in the focus right now. It's uh, 76 degrees outside and it's like 150 inside this car. But I figured I'd start out the video in here because I do dumb stuff. Anyway, for all you new folk up to the top of the car here is a link to the last video where I worked on this thing. It'll get you caught up. Shut up, shut up. I really gotta disable that buzzer. All right, in the garage. Let's get to work. Hello, I gotta set up the quick jack. Time lapse. Did it start? That was awkward. Editing's fun. Okay. It's only March. It's almost 80. There's giant crane flies out already. Car is up. Time to get under it. Let me sit you guys down right here real quick. Focus. So I'm under the car because I need to make some templates for my underbelly protection of the car with the plastic sheets that I have. Stuff like these lines right here, you don't want to get caught up on rocks. So my thought is to do the plastic sheets mounted right here on these rails that run either side of the exhaust and then tie them over to the very edge where my pinch welds are at. And you're probably wondering why I'm using plastic and that's because it actually slides a lot better on rocks and when you use metal, it seems to catch on stuff a lot easier and cause more damage and rip stuff off the bottom of the car, whereas plastic, it's designed to break and tear. You could definitely run a drive shaft down the center of this thing. That'd be kind of dope. At least I have this rear subframe looking area. I might be able to mount stuff onto this. This area is gonna be tricky. Down here on the um, lower control arms, these I'm gonna actually line with metal, I think, and strengthen these guys up. What the hell is this? Oh, that goes up into there. All right. This is a lot thicker than I thought it was gonna be. That's what, that's what she said. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, this stuff is dope. It's got a little bit of texture to it. So I think I should take my measurements first and transfer them onto this and then cut this. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's do it. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna stick this whole sheet under here and see what one big sheet would do. Okay, that is sick. Oh, that's perfect. Let me out. This worked out so well. I literally don't even have to cut this. Well, I mean, I gotta trim it, but this is perfect just as it is. I lucked out so hard. I basically just gotta trim one side of it to follow the tunnel where the exhaust is and the other side stays true and straight. Oh, my Sharpie. Sharpie. Yep. That sucks. It's getting stuck on the rubber block that's under the pinch weld. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. This actually works pretty good for making templates. A big sheet of cardboard and just drawing on it with the Sharpie. And then I just cut out like six inch segments at a time since I gotta do what I gotta do. It's kinda hard actually. <laughs> it's hard, but it's not hard. I don't know. It's doing the job though. Butt that up against there. That's solid right there. This right here is my template for the skid plate for 
the left side and the great thing is all you gotta do is flip it over and it's the exact same on the other side of the car. With the exception of this little area right here that was just because it was on my quick jack lift and I had to cut it out to fit up against the pinch weld, this over here has to be trimmed. This is where the exhaust tunnel in the center of the car is and this can be mirrored exactly for the other side of the car. It is exactly the same. So two templates. Problem is I need a bandsaw to cut this out on or a jigsaw. Jigsaw will work just fine and it's the next day. And I have my lens back from the camera repair shop. It cost me $500 just to fix this lens. Lesson learned, don't drop it onto your kitchen counter from six inches above the countertop. For those of you that care about lenses, I've been shooting with this for the past two weeks. I had to Amazon Prime it in an emergency so I'd have a backup lens. Did a pretty good job though. Get this sheet done with. <laughs> Get it? Get this sheet done with. That's funny, I don't care who you are. Sheet. Sheet. Need to trace out my template. Make sure this thing is nice and squared away. Take this off. And there we go. My template. That turned out pretty good. It looks like it's a little crooked, but it's actually not really a straight path that it follows. It's up against some heat shielding. So yeah, I think that'll work. There's one side. Common sense would dictate that I should probably test fit this on the car before I cut the duplicate out because if I don't and I cut the duplicate out the same, then I'm gonna have two pieces that don't fit. That would suck. So I guess I bring the car in here. Or I could do the smart thing and just jack it up in the driveway and look, I think I'll do that. All right, switching to GoPro. This is really hard to mock up under here with one person, but I mean, it follows the frame rail the way it's supposed to, and it tucks up underneath the subframe right here. I think I'm able to get that to work. One day, I will get a real lift from doing this YouTube channel. One day. It's a new day and it's raining out. Kind of like the rain. Gump, you gotta go outside. I need to work on the focus. I got the left and the right side cut out and ready to go. I'm not putting them on the car though until I have all the skid plates made. That way I can match them up off the car when I'm making my cuts and do adjustments before they go on the car. And then once they're all ready, I'll put them all on at once. I'm gonna mount them to the car by drilling some holes along the frame rails and putting these rib nuts in there. And then using these bolts right here, it's a rounded Allen head bolt. Like I said in the last video though, I have some headlights to sort out because I have zero headlights on this car. It sucks when I have to move it at nighttime because I can't see where I'm going. Reason being is because I do have these European spec headlights along with the Euro spec grill that I put on the car because the factory headlights were absolutely trashed and I wanted the base model headlights because they're clean and they're simple and they were nowhere near as expensive as the projector HID option that was available in this car. But that means I have to wire them up because the USDM harness is different than the U harness. These are actually a Volkswagen Audi part that bolts onto a Ford headlight. <laughs> I think I have to take the grill out, I forgot. Gently, gently, headlight out. Ooh, it's peeing on me. Got a ground and then a s potential for the high and potential for the low beam. 
Oh, that means I gotta add a wire for my turn signal, which should be, we got a ground and then two wires, I assume for daytime ring light and then turn signal. Okay, time to build some harnesses. You guys know how OCD I am with my wiring projects and ideally I wish I could just take this new plug that I have with the pins and cut the wires on the factory harness and make it super clean with no splices anywhere. But these harnesses are super short so I have no choice but to add wire which means I either have to use a butt connector or solder the wires. I bought this Dymo a while back and I've been wanting to use it on a wiring project. It's something I did when I was in the Air Force and I had to do big wiring jobs and create labels for each one of my wires. That way, if I have a bunch of wires that are exactly the same color, it makes it a lot easier to figure out what pin goes into what socket of the cannon plug. Luckily, I found a tutorial online that already has the wiring schematic printed up for this thing and it says exactly what pin each wire should go into on the VW harness. So whoever did all that legwork a couple years back, thank you. If I didn't have this right up on the internet telling me what wire was what, I could very easily use my multimeter and check for potential on each one of these wires by turning on the low beams and seeing which one has 12 volts, turn on the high beams, and so on and so forth until I figure out which wire is which. But this makes it way easier. I'm adding on about 10 inches of extra wire to the directional and daytime running light harness. That way I can run it along the top half of the bumper and have it come out right where the factory SVT focus headlight harness is located. And unfortunately I put my labels way down low near the location where the directional used to be. So I have to add new labels up top so I don't forget which wire is which when I wrap it all up with the protective jacketing. And now all I gotta do is add the little plastic doodad and plug in the headlight and see if it works. And it should also work with the city light too that's in this headlight. I believe, if I wired this correctly. The pin numbers you see that I printed out with the Dymo on these wires are actually going to correspond to the locations on this Audi Volkswagen headlight plug. Why Ford uses an Audi Volkswagen plug in Europe instead of a Ford plug, I don't know. But yeah, there's numbers actually printed on here. Somebody's gonna freak out because I forgot to put the little rubber grommets on the back side of this plug, but whatever, I'll stick some RTV in these holes. And then I just discovered this guy right here. The bulb and the socket from the USDM Focus headlight do not screw into the European headlight. The socket on the European spec headlight has these two terminals, one's a power in the ground and actually supplies the power for the bulb holder itself. And the USDM one is completely different. It has a harness that goes on the backside. So nothing will secure on here. It doesn't stay locked in. I think what I need is a P21W socket bulb holder. I think, it says it on the side of the headlight, stamped P21W right above where the turn signal is. So if anyone knows where I can find one of those, I think, I'm guessing it's a European spec socket holder. Let me know in the comment section below uh, a link to where I can buy two of those at for the driver and the passenger side. Just out of sheer curiosity though, I wanna see if I wired it correctly. Pin eight goes to ground, pin three is the sensor terminal, and pin four is the outer terminal. Should be wired correctly. Maybe I can just like prop the bulb up. Lastly, I gotta replace the fuse. 10 amp fuse is out because I have a different style headlight bulb in there now with a dedicated high and a dedicated low beam. Swap these guys out. I forgot I have to replace my multifunction switch. It's permanently stuck on high beam because the switch is bad. I have a new one though, but that works. I have working headlights. That works. I just gotta get the correct socket though so it stays in there. I gotta do that multifunction switch though so I can make sure the low beam works. I'm sure it does because it was stuck on high beams when I first bought this car with the old headlights. So when I change that switch out, it should be good to go. But I have a huge mess that I need to pick up. I also need to finish the other side headlight, which I'm not gonna film because you already watched it once. And as far as skid plates go, um, next thing is the under engine skid plate that's gonna be made out of steel and the fuel tank one, which will be made out of steel. Once those are made, I'll do all the skid plates at once and install them all at the same time. But yeah, at least now I got headlights. So when I pull the car out of the garage at night and see where I'm going and uh, 
I will have some garage content coming for you soon since most of you want to see a garage video. So I got a lot of work to do in here. And I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye.